We've got a system here where a PLC is controlling the speed of a motor through a variable frequency drive using Modbus. The only connection we have right now between the PLC and the variable frequency drive, the VFD, is this Modbus cable using RS-45 serial data communication to send Modbus commands to the VFD and tell it not only to start and stop, but also what speed to spin at. If we look at the display of the HMI, we've got a start button, a run, which tells the motor to come up to speed. We can see it coming up to speed to 50 hertz. We also have a stop button that tells it to slow down all the way to zero. If we start it again, hit the run button, and then if we hit the uh, frequency input, we can actually tell it to go to a different speed. Instead of 50 hertz, we can tell it to go to, let's say, 40 hertz. And now that settles in at 40 hertz. Here's how we're accomplishing this feat. If we take a look at the PLC program, we see we have three Modbus send instructions. They're all sending out of port number three in the PLC, and they're sending to the same slave address, slave number one, number one, number one, which is our VFD slave number. We could have multiple VFDs or multiple Modbus devices all daisy-chained on the same two-wire network, <coughs> each one of them with a different slave address. That's why it's important for this to be configured to the right slave address and for the instructions here to be talking to the right address. So, let's see what the instructions do. In this first one right here, we are activating this instruction on the downstroke of a half-second clock. And what this is doing is it is writing a value, an integer value, to the register inside the VFD that tells it the speed command. Right now the value of that is 400, which is a fixed point integer number telling it the uh, frequency drive how much hertz to put out. So 400 actually means 400.0. There's an implied decimal point to that. If I come over here and enter a different frequency, let's say if I go to uh, 300, which is 30 hertz, the drive interprets that as 30 hertz, even though the actual integer number value in the PLC is 300. Again, there's an implied decimal point that's implied by interpretation in the drive that forces a 300 to be read as 30.0. This allows you to have fractional values using integer numbers. So that's our speed command being written to uh, hex address 91A inside the drive. For the start and stop command, this is hex address 91B. This is kind of interesting. In this um, automation direct drive, instead of writing a single bit to that address to turn it on and off, we have to write a complete word, a complete 16-bit word to address 91B. If the value of that word is a 1, it starts. If the value of that word is 0, it stops. And so we have two pre-programmed integer values here, DS2 and DS3. This one programmed to a value of 1, this one programmed to a value of 0. And we are sending one or the other based on the upstroke of the 500 millisecond clock and the uh, Boolean value of C1, which is our start-stop bit. So if I hit the run stop button over here on the HMI, I will change the value of the C1 bit over here. You can watch this as I hit the stop button. And as I hit the run button, you can see these two uh, in contact instructions changing color. So that's activating a different send instruction on the upstroke of the clock, uh, sending a different value, either 0 or 1, to that register that controls the starting and stopping of the drive. In many other brands of uh, VFDs, that's actually a single bit that you would write. In this case, it's a whole word that we're having to write to that address, 91B hex, in the drive to start it and to stop it. So in a nutshell, that's our program. We're looking at uh, control of the motor starting and stopping, as well as speed control using a fixed point integer value. That's all being done over Modbus. This is very powerful because, like I said before, we could daisy chain multiple Modbus devices on the same pair of wires and have the PLC address them separately simply by using different address values, uh, slave ID values, and different communication instructions in the program. So we could have um, you know, over 100 different devices here daisy-chained if we wished, all talking Modbus on the same pair of wires. It's highly efficient from the perspective of wiring.